Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing the heart. Okay, so so far what we've discussed is that the sinoatrial node will fire 70 times generally a minute, okay? And when it fires, it will take the diastolic heart, which is this heart that's completely relaxed, and it will take it into a heartbeat, basically. So what will happen is when the um, cardiomyocytes of the sinoatrial node, which are of this conductory type, okay, conducting type, uh, fire, they will spread this action potential, basically. The, all of the cells of the heart are electrically connected. They have gap junctions between them, which we will study more in later videos, uh, which allows the action potential in the sinoatrial node to spread and cause action potentials in the surrounding cardiomyocytes. And then those cardiomyocytes will cause action potentials in their neighbors, and then it will just spread along both atria. However, the uh, cardiomyocytes of the atria are not connected, not at all electrically connected to the uh, cardiomyocytes of the ventricles. In fact, they're very unelectrically connected. There is a great big septum between the two to stop electrical activity in the atria causing electrical activity in the ventricles. So this doesn't spread down to the ventricles, not yet anyway. Right. So, uh, what uh, is then going to happen is when these action potentials spread down the atria, what it's going to cause is it's going to cause the atria to contract. So the atria, both atria, the uh, right and the left atria, are going to contract and they're going to squeeze the blood. So back to our physiological picture, they're going to squeeze the blood that's within them into the ventricles, okay? So now we've gone from being in diastole to being in what's known as atrial systole. So systole means contraction, okay? So we need to draw like a, a flow diagram for this, but I don't know how we're going to put it on this piece of paper. So diastole goes to atrial systole then, okay? So here's this awful flow diagram going like that. So diastole to atrial systole at the moment. Atrial systole just means the contraction of the atria. The blood has now been squeezed out of the atria and into the ventricles. So you've got a lot of blood now in these two ventricles, the right ventricle and the left ventricle here. Right. Now, uh, again, these two valves, the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid or mitral valve, or you can also call them the atrioventricular valves, Basically, they're one-way gates. They allow blood to flow from the atria to the ventricles, but once um, blood starts trying to flow back from the ventricles to the atria, what's going to happen is the, the blood is going to force those gates shut, and the gates will not bend back into the atria. They'll just close, and then the blood won't be able to flow back. So that's what stops the blood from going from the ventricles back into the atria. Okay, so the atrioventricular valves have now shut, and what's going to follow is ventricular systole, ventricular contraction. So, basically, there is a little electrical window, there's a hole in the uh, atrioventricular septum, and it's, where can I show this? It's somewhere, on the physiological diagram, it will be somewhere around here. It's more difficult to show it on the anatomical diagram. So here's the sinoatrial node on our physiological diagram. And here's what's known as the atrioventricular node, i.e. this electrical window between the atria and the ventricles. The Probably the best place I can show it on here would be to put it kind of there. It's it's in the middle. It's, it's in the wall between the two ventricles, between the uh, right ventricle and the left ventricle. And then it will also need to be in connection with where the atria are. So the atria are sort of going to finish here, if you can imagine behind uh, the, the um, pulmonary trunk shown here. They're going to finish there, and then the, it's going to spread down into this certain portion of, connect, uh, of conducting cardiomyocytes. So this is the next example of conducting cardiomyocytes. And this basically is known as the atrioventricular node. Okay, so atrioventricular node. And the atrioventricular node is often abbreviated to the AVN. Okay, so you'll often hear the sinoatrial node referred to it as the SAN. And in the same spirit, the AV node is, well, actually, AV node is probably even more common to hear than the AVN. 
In fact, it's the same for S S A N. You often hear these referred to as the S A node and the A V node. Okay, right. So this action potential is going to spread through the atria, and then it's going to get to these conducting cardiomyocytes. So again, these are cardiomyocytes which are not contract contractile, and instead their function is in spreading the um, action potential along uh, the well along the cardiac tissue. So this is the atrioventricular node. So it's a bunch of cardiomyocytes whose function it is to convey the electrical signal. Now, the electrical signal propagates through the AV node really, really slowly. And the reason is that you have to wait for uh, both of these atria to completely contract. You have to give them time. You don't want the ventricles to contract uh, instantly as w when the atria contract. You want the atria to contract, expel all their blood into the ventricles, and then you want the ventricles to contract. And the delay is provided by the AV node, which conducts this electrical signal very slowly. So it takes its time conducting it, and then it passes it to more cells, more conducting cardiomyocytes. Um, so you have more conducting cardiomyocytes, which are going to pass the signal along this wall in between the right ventricle, sorry, the, yes, um, yes, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. So in the wall, in this physiological diagram, there's a very thick wall between the atria and the vent uh, sorry, between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And in this wall, which is also shown here, so let me get some colour on this. So here is this wall in this physiological diagram here. Okay, or well, this rough anatomical diagram, because it is an anatomical diagram, it's just not as good as this one. Okay, this is the same wall as we've got here between this right ventricle and this left ventricle. And basically, in that wall, there are uh, cardiomyocytes, which are not contractile cardiomyocytes. Instead, they are just conducting cardiomyocytes. And they're all assembled into a bundle, basically, that spreads down this um, septum between the two ventricles. Okay, which is actually called the ventricular septum. So this in green is the ventricular septum. So where should I write that? Here, I think. Oops. This is the ventricular septum. Okay, ventricular septum. Right, and there's a bundle of cardiomyocytes which are conducting fibers which are spreading from the AV node. They connect the AV node and they go down this um, ventricular septum here. Okay, and this is known as the bundle of his. Okay, so this is the bundle of his bundle of his. His was a um, was a scientist, well, um, an anatomist, I believe, or, or maybe a physiologist, I don't know. He was a scientist. Okay, now the bundle of his spreads spread some way down this septum, and then what it does is it splits into two halves. One that's going to supply the right half of the heart, the right ventricle, and then one that's going to supply the left heart. So it splits into two bundles, known as the right bundle branch. So this is the right bundle branch here. Right bundle branch. And then the other one is the left bundle branch. So this here, which I'll write over here, is the left bundle branch. Okay, and these are still both in this uh, ventricular septum. They're not yet... Um, they've not yet left the ventricular septum, left bundle branch. Okay, so what's happening so far is that the action potential is being conducted down these fibres and it has not yet caused uh, an action potential in the ventricles. And let me tell you why we're taking this action potential down to the base of the heart. If we had started it off up here, if we just, if we just let the action potential conduct through the AV node and then spread on to the ventricular myocytes, what would have happened? You'd have got contraction of the ventricular myocytes up at the top, and then it would have gradually spread down uh, in the same way as it spread through the atria, just from cardiomyocyte to cardiomyocyte. The problem is you'd have got contraction of the cardiomyocytes at the top first, and then later on you'd have got contraction at the bottom. That's no good at all. You're going to squeeze the blood right into the base and the heart will burst. So you need to take the action potential right to the bottom 
where it's not actually being conducted through the normal contractile cardiomyocytes. Instead, it's being uh, conducted through this specific uh, specialized bunch of cardiomyocytes, which are specialized for conduct conduction. It's going to come down here, and then it's going to be released on the normal contractile cardiomyocytes from the bottom, and then it's going to spread upwards and push the blood out of the ventricle. So that's why we're doing this. Okay, right. So you have this right and left bundle branch, and then what these spread onto is more fibres which are going to distribute among the base of the um, of the um, of the ventricles of the right and left ventricle, and then give the action potential, give this electrical st stimulus to the um, to the normal contractile cardiomyocytes, and these fibres which spread amongst the normal contractile cardiomyocytes, these are known as Purkinje fibres. Okay, so Purkinje fibres, the right bundle branch, the left bundle branch, the bundle of his, the AV node, they are all conducting cardiomyocytes. So these are Purkinje fibres. Okay, right, so to summarise then, the sinoatrial node is going to begin the whole action potential. It's going to propagate down the atria, okay, causing atrial systole, okay, then it's going to get to the atrioventricular node where it will conduct very, very, very slowly through the atrioventricular node. Then it will go down the bundle of his, splits into the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch. It will spread down those, and then it will go to these Purkinje fibres, which will then cause a spreading action potential in the cardiomyocytes. So you'll spread, an action potential will spread from the cardiomyocytes at the base of these two ventricles, and it will spread upwards, causing initial contraction at the base of these ventricles, which spreads upwards, pushing the blood out of either the pulmonary trunk or the aorta. And of course, uh, the um, semilunar valves of the aorta and the pulmonary trunk will now open uh, because uh, they were, again, a one-way system. So they will easily allow blood to push them open in this direction. It's just they won't allow blood to push them open in the opposite direction. So when the blood needs to be ejected from these two uh, ventricles, then the uh, semilunar valves will just open, basically, and allow the blood to move out. Whereas the, uh, sorry, the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve, when the blood tries to push back out into the atria, these are going to, that's going the wrong way, basically. So it will push these two gates closed, basically, and you won't get the movement of blood um, in back into the atria. Okay, right. So that's, um, that's ventricular systole now. You've got ventricular contraction. Okay, and then after, what will happen is after you've had ventricular systole, you'll get relaxation, uh, relaxation of both the atria and the ventricles, and then the heart will return to diastole, and then it can go through the whole process again when the sinoatrial node next beats, and that's why it's called the cardiac cycle. Okay, now, I said one thing about how the conduction fibres were all capable of generating their own action potentials. Now, the conducting fibres, they include the sinoatrial node, the AV node, the bundle of His, the right and left bundle branch, and the Purkinje fibres at the bottom here. Now, why is it the sinoatrial node that always starts the action potential then, if um, these are all capable of doing that as well? Well, the reason is that the sinoatrial node fires 60 times per, sorry, 70 times per minute, whereas these ones they fire much, much slower, basically. Um, so if you actually did take the atrioventricular node out of the heart, it would fire, but I think it's something like 50 times a minute, basically. So when the sinoatrial node is firing faster, then it's just going to induce action potentials in these quicker than they can induce action potentials in themselves. So they won't ever get a chance to uh, dominate the beat of the heart, basically. That concept that they are autorhythmic, but uh, that they're being overridden, basically, because they're having action potentials induced in them at a higher frequency than they're capable of inducing them themselves, and therefore it's invisible that the, f the fact that they are uh, generating action potentials. That's known as overdrive suppression. Okay, right. Uh, so it does become apparent, though, if, the, if something happens to the sinoatrial node, 
such that the sine wave tool node stops working, what will happen is the AV node will take over the beat of the heart and the heart will beat slower because the AV node uh, generates action potential slower than the sinoatrial node, but it is capable of generating an action potential nonetheless. Okay, and the same for if something happens to the sinoatrial node and the AV node, then it will be the bundle of Hiss. Uh, so basically, it gets the rate at which they generate action potentials gets slower as you go along this pathway. So the sinoatrial node, I think, is around 70. The AV node is, I think, about 50, and then it goes down even further as you go further down. So it might go down to 40 for the bundle of Hiss and 30 maybe for the Kinji fibers. Those numbers I don't know. They're, they're just to illustrate the point. Okay, thank you.